Okay, this is a really typical garnet. High relief, um, no pleochroism. It maybe has a little bit of color to it. Can be a little tannish or a little pinkish. Um, uh, but what's really distinctive is that when you cross the polars, it's black because garnet belongs to the cubic crystal system. This one has lots of inclusions of quartz in it. Um, that's little white specks in there. This is garnet from a calcilicate, um, metamorphosed siliceous limestone. And um, it's really pink. It, it has a very high calcium content. Um, garnets in calcilicates tend to be have a lot more color than garnets in other sorts of rocks. Another garnet, lots of inclusions in the core um, and outer edge that's, um, that has fewer inclusions. Um, and you can see that uh, it has no pleochroism and has very high relief. And of course, when you cross the polars, it turns black, except for all the inclusions in it. Now, this is an odd one. Here, the garnet has been growing along grain boundaries, uh, quartz grain boundaries. Um, so it has an almost fishnet kind of uh, texture to it. As other people call it a honeycomb texture. Um, but this is usually interpreted to reflect extremely rapid growth where the garnet is basically exploding along the, uh, along the grain boundaries. Now this is a beautiful garnet from an eclogite. Again, high relief, maybe a little pinkish. Um, but what's distinctive about this is its, um, its six-sided um, polygons are very typically the form that garnet adopts when it has good crystal forms. Um, so this one shows that very well. Now this one is unusual because it's actually got eight sides. I don't normally see that. Um, but I put this in here because it has lots of graphite inclusions. And the graphite has um, been incorporated in different sectors in uh, different amounts. And so you can actually make out the different growth features of the garnet, the different crystallographic forms on it. This is a garnet that has reacted to form biotite, and there's also a lot of monazite in that. Um, that that's the radioactive accessory mineral there. Um, but this is a, a prograde reaction that forms stor storolite, and it breaks down garnet, and the garnet reacts to form uh, biotite. Okay, I paused this clip um, because there's some stuff I have to explain about this. Now, this is an unusual sample. Um, it's a thick section, 100 microns thick. We use this for specialized uh, spectroscopic analysis of inclusions. Um, and so what you're seeing is a garnet, and um, it has lots of inclusions of graphite and also inclusions of quartz, and that's what's outlining these different zones. Um, now, when I cross the polars, what you're going to see is that the um, garnet actually isn't isotropic. That is, it does have some interference colors to it. Now, they're subtle, I know. The little bright specks, those are, those are quartz, but that sort of um, almost ghostly uh, bluish-white color, that's actually the garnet. Um, and it means that the garnet is actually in the tetragonal crystal system. What brings it into that system is a substitution of hydrogen for silicon. And so it's usually referred to as a hydrograssular substitution. Very unusual. This is, I, I've only ever seen this in graphitic rocks and um, with these thick sections.